Welcome to the spirit world, answering your questions on angels, demons, and how the spiritual and physical worlds interact. And now your hosts, Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. Well, hello there and welcome to the spirit world. I am Debbie Giorgiani with religious demonologist and co-host Adam Bly. And we're waving to all the uh, YouTube and social medias going strong. Hi, you guys. Thanks for joining us on this November open forum. That's right. Any question on angels, demons, anything in between, we are uh, ready, willing, and able to answer your call. And we'll have a great discussion this very quick hour in Catholic radio. The number to dial is 8 Eight seven 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 five seven nine four two four. That's eight seven 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 five seven nine four two four. We want to get right to the phones. So if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so right away. We don't have anything prepared to present to you this this uh, wonderful episode. So we turn our attention completely to your calls for this open forum. But Adam, we always begin with the Saint Michael prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Adam, please wave again to everybody on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, X, Rumble, TikTok, all the socials. Wow, you guys are so amazing. Get your um, questions in there. That would be wonderful. Um, so please do that. But if you would like to call in, we can put you on air with us. We have Carol and Libby on the phones already answering your calls coming in all around the world. Thank you to EWTN Global Catholic Radio. Radio Network for broadcasting the show. We are produced by the Guadalupe Radio Network. So Tim Mott, our producer, is at the controls, making us hopefully sound crystal clear right to your home or to your car or wherever you're listening to this program. But this is your show, The Spirit World, and it's very important that you get your questions answered. So the number to dial is 877-757-9424. And Adam, I wanted to just take a few minutes to just uh, see what's going on in your life and how you're working work is going because we've been praying for you with the uh, exorcism uh, work that you do on a weekly basis. Plus, Adam, you are traveling to Texas soon. Yeah, I'm going to be in Allen, Texas, December 6th through the 8th for the Spiritual Warfare Conference that Fullness of Truth is putting on. I'll be there with Father Carlos Martins and Father Dan Rahill, both exorcists, and a number of other great speakers. Um, it's going to be a good event. I think it's going to be a, a large event. It sounds like the ticket sales are really strong. So if you want to um, get tickets, go to Fullness of Truth, all one word there, Fullness of Truth, no spaces, no nothing, fullnessoftruth.org, um, because I understand that the tickets are selling fast. Um, but yeah, that's going to be exciting. And we're going to have a special virtual presentation uh, by Deb on Guardian Angels. Mm -hmm. And um so, yeah, it's going to be hopefully a really nice event. Fullness of Truth, they always put on just top quality events, and, and it's, it's nice to meet people in person. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I love Fullness of Truth um, conferences. I believe they're anointed. It, mm -hmm. uh, people walk away really being changed and, and, and in a beautiful way. And so I love that. And so I think the Spiritual Warfare Conference coming up at the beginning of December, um, it's December 6th through the 8th. So please, I agree with Adam, get register, uh, get there, so, you know, fly in, drive in, walk in, whatever you got to do in Allen, Texas. Uh, and all you have to do is go to fullnessoftruth.org. Right, Adam? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so Adam, the phone lines are lighting up, so our listeners do have things to ask about angels or demons or anything in between, the spiritual world. So the number to dial, you don't have to be Catholic to call in. We welcome um, calls from all around the world. So if you would like to have a question um, or you have a comment that you want to make or you want to discuss something, now is the show to do it because once a month we do an open forum where we just open up the phone lines right at the beginning of the show and we take as many calls 
calls as possible. Also, as many questions and comments from social media, from Facebook and YouTube. And then also we, we pull from um, those that are coming in uh, by email. So just know that we, we really welcome um, the, the, a, a very robust, a vibrant discussion on this so we can learn and grow together. So if you sit this out, you think somebody else is going to ask your question, mm, it might not happen. So we really need to hear from you. 877-757-9424. That's the number to call, 877-757-9424. And are you ready to go to our first caller? Yes, it sounds exciting. Okay, we've got Deacon Paul from Santa, Bar Santa Barbara, California on a JP <laughs> Radio. Do we have Deacon with us? Good morning. Good morning, yeah, Deacon. Deacon, I good always... Morning. Good morning. I always mess this up. Is it, is it Santa? How do, you, how do you actually pronounce your city? Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, okay, so but Santa Barbara, yeah. Okay, so you say it like that. That's what I thought, but then somebody, I heard somebody yeah. l recently say it a little differently, like like a little bit quicker, and I thought, maybe that's the way you guys say it, like, locally, so I wasn't sure. But anyway, Deacon, we love you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and, and you go ahead. You have the floor. I love you both, and I've learned a lot over the years that I've been listening. Uh, my question is to Adam. Um, how has his life changed from when he first started? Because I know when you're younger, you live life for what it is. But when you experience certain things, on uh, um, what he deals with, how he treats life, he's able to lead a normal life. And because sometimes I become very leery about certain things, I know things don't happen spontaneously. They just come out of nowhere. But what he deals with all the time, how does he treat life and how has it changed so much over the years that he's been uh, dealing with exorcism through his time? Mm. Well, Deacon, um I guess it's it's kind of hard to see yourself from the inside. It's kind of hard to have perspective. But I would I would say, you know, if I was looking at myself from the outside, that the knowledge that it's all actually real, that it's not just um, something I've concluded to in my reasoning or somebody encouraged me to believe and I believe it, but that it's actually real, it does change your life. And then when you do it every week, there's a constant reminder that it's real. Um, I know where sin comes from. I know the individual spirits that are behind inspiring a lot of the sin that goes on in the world. Um, and that makes it very concrete for me. So in a sense over the years, it's in a way it's become a little bit easier to wrestle with temptation because when I'm tempted, instead of it being kind of a wrestling with yourself and, you know, oh, you know, I shouldn't fall to this temptation and I should do that because it's the right thing to do, you know, and avoid this temptation, it becomes very concrete. And so I kind of see the fruits of sin, which is spiritual death, much more blatantly than most people get to see it. And I see that as a gift. Um, I also know the creatures that are behind it all, and I, I don't want to end up with them for sure like i know exactly what they're all about i know what their natures are i have no illusions about you know the devil's a nice guy or he's a neutral figure or any of that i i absolutely do not want to end up with these creatures because i i've you know in a sense i've seen the face of hell to put it dramatically um over and over and over again and so that gives me a great um, reverence for God and, and I want to avoid hell. So in a sense, I think it, it's spiritually a strengthening thing. Okay. So Deacon Paul, you got, you got my wheels turning in my head here. Cause I want to, I want to ask a kind of follow up question if I can. So hang, hang on the phone with us for a second. So Adam, when yeah. you encounter people and you just like your normal interactions that you have at the diocese, right? And that's not part of your exorcism work. Mm -hmm. When you, um, interact with them and you see them saying something or doing something that could possibly be a doorway for the demons, does it register in your head? Like, oh, this person's making a mistake. They, be <laughs> they better not be saying this or they better not be doing this. Does that kind of, you know, do you, do, do, does that go off in your head or do, are you totally, can you compartmentalize from your exorcism ministry work and then your, your work at the diocese? Well, it's kind of both, Deb. So it's the same thing that happened in learning psychology. 
Um, I have a master's in adult clinical psychology. And when you're learning to be a therapist in the beginning, you're real mindful of everything and you're thinking about everything and you're, you're thinking through the meaning of everything the client says and your reaction and et cetera, et cetera. And then over the years, it becomes unconscious and you no longer have to actively think about it, but your mm -hmm. instinct is built on your training and it just becomes something that flows. This is the same way. I'm, I'm aware of the footprints of the demonic in the world and, and their inroads in people's lives, but I don't sit around constantly dwelling on that and thinking about it. Um, so I'm aware of it and I'll kind of get that nudge inside my mind like, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's an issue. And I might, if I were to hear such a thing, I would probably gently encourage the person, you know, mm -hmm. about that or ask them if they wanted to talk about it. Um, but yeah, basically it's both. I do compartmentalize it because you don't want to think about the demonic all week. Um, you want to have some balance in your life. And so mm -hmm. you, you do your work and then you focus on Jesus the rest of the time. Focus on Mary, focus on the saints. I don't think about the demons outside of the actual exorcisms. That's interesting. So Deacon Paul, you were the first one for the November open forum. So if you have an additional question or comment, feel, feel free. Yes. Um, the thing is, is um, I've been working in the hospital for 45 years, taking care of the sick. And over the years, I've seen a lot of different things happening. And I think more of it was exposed as I became a deacon. Uh, the thing is that I really am surprised by a lot of people, as well, also Catholics, that don't believe in um, you know things that can happen. Uh, they stray and uh, they go, oh, no, it's part of the church. Uh, like uh, Ricky or they're doing sage, they go, you know what, uh, that's not what you, and I go into a little bit more of the history behind it. So many times I pray for them, also pray for the sick, and it always keeps in the back of my mind, I worry about them, that it, that they improve their life and that they see the different things that can happen. So it, it, it's kind of, you just grow, and I think I've grown over the years, but all I do is keep them in prayer and in love with what we're, we're given through God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had similar experiences working in a in a uh, correctional hospital, prison hospital, um, where I was I was the the psychological services person for the actual hospital, and and I saw a lot of people in that situation similarly that had gotten into a lot of darkness in their lives, and and yeah. whether they wanted prayer or ministry at the end of their life, and whether they would talk with the chaplain and that kind of thing, and yeah, we. You'd pray for them, you know, even if they didn't want any help or prayer, you just pray for them in an intercessory way. But, yeah, I, I was very aware of um, the sadness of some of those situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, thank you. Well, thank you so much. No, thank, thank you, both of you. I appreciate you being and helping all those people, and God bless. Oh, thank you, Deacon. That was Deacon Paul from Santa Barbara, California, a beautiful place of the country. If you've never been there, you should definitely visit. It is absolutely gorgeous. So thank you, Deacon. Uh, we appreciate all the, the love and support. You have been uh, there f uh, for us from the very beginning of the spirit world, and we, and we appreciate when our clergy really steps up and supports these great programs on Catholic Radio. So Adam, you hear the music. We're going to take that first break. When we come back, more of your calls on this November open forum here on the spirit world. The number to dial is 877-757-9424. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at the spirit world podcast. That's very important. We grow the family there and it's growing each and every day. More and more folks are posting and asking their questions and making their comments, but you can call us today. We'd love to hear from you. 877-757-9424. And we'll be right back with more of your calls from around the country. A fierce war rages for your soul. Are you ready for battle? Equip yourself with the knowledge you need by attending the upcoming Spiritual Warfare Conference. I, Adam Bly, will be in North Texas December 6th through the 8th. Also at the conference, two renowned exorcists, Father Carlos Martins and Father Dan Rehill, as well as Kathleen Beckman, an expert on healing and deliverance. Plus, a special message from Debbie Giorgiani about angels. Check out all the details at fullnessoftruth.org. 
When I was in college, I ended up having a lot of questions about my faith, and I ended up leaving the church. After a series of personal tragedies, I really felt a need to come home to a church, and that's when I came back to the Catholic Church. I never realized before that we get, at every Mass, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Gospel. I never realized before it's all biblically based. The Catholic Church is based on the Bible. This is the church that Christ started, and we practice all the sacraments as He gave them to us, and I think that's important. I um, love getting up and going to church. I love going to Mass. I feel like I get to go to Mass, not like I have to go to Mass. The joy, I have joy in my spirit, I have a lightness in my spirit that I haven't had before. I love the Catholic Church with all my heart, and I can't imagine my life without it. My life is totally different now. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for whatever reason, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Want some more joy in your life? Need some more peace in your day? Want to wake up each morning excited about life in a whole new way? Life coaching may be just what you need. We have a team of dedicated coaches willing to assist you in creating a plan for a better future with God as the focus. Jesus said, I came for you to have life and have it to the full. So begin today with that abundant life. Visit us at StandTallToday.com. The Spirit World continues with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. If you have a question for the show, call 877-757-9424 or email tsw at grnonline.com. This is our open forum for November, so we are taking calls. So we don't have anything prepared to share at the beginning of the show, which usually takes up the first two segments of the show, and then we get to the calls. So this is all about you today. So we, we don't want you to wait till the end of the show. If you have a longer uh, story that you needed to share with us and there's more details uh, to it that you need to convey to us, you can always email us, tsw at grnonline.com, and we'll happily read your emails. But you can put your comments on social media, or you can call in and just uh, let uh, Libby and Carol know um, what the question is, and we'll address it like Scott from Rochester, New York, and others that are calling in. We will uh, try to get to your um, questions in just a moment, but we're going to get back to the phones because uh, folks are waiting and they've called in early. So we had Deacon Paul first from California. Now we have Carl from Dallas, Texas, and is listening on Guadalupe Radio Network. Hi, Carl. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, my question is, sometimes I'm just going about my own business or you know, work or family, and I get like a very intense feeling toward vice or evil or some kind of really ugly image that just kind of seems like it comes out of the blue. Could this be, you know, some kind of demonic thing? And if so, uh, how would I handle it? Okay, Carl. So, of course, this, this could be many different things. There's no way to, to simply figure it out in a couple minutes of this conversation. But here's a few things you can you can kind of pursue or think about um you know everybody once in a while gets intrusive thoughts that are either inappropriate or are angry or things like that if it's um something that's happened your entire life that would be one thing like if it seems to be part of uh coming out of your childhood and whether there was a lot of violence there that could be you know leaning towards more psychological there also could be um, brain things that can lead to violent impulses. Um, they're, you know, relatively rare, but, but there can be those also. If you have a history with the occult or playing around with divination or ghost hunting, which is uh, necromancy, or opening the door to the demonic some way, that might lean towards it's possible it's more of an intrusive thing coming from the enemy. What I would say, though, is pursue everything. If you're Catholic or, or Christian, talk with your minister, talk with your priest and say, you know, hey, I'm having these things. Um, if you ever think you're going to act on them, like if you ever think like, oh, I can't resist this or I came close to acting on it, 
definitely talk with your wife, talk with your doctor, do what you need to do to figure out what's going on and, and make sure nobody gets hurt for sure. Um, but, you know, unless there's a lot more to the picture, Carl, I would, I would say it's probably not just uh, spiritual. For something spiritual to happen that's really that strong and pronounced, generally the person has opened the door to the demonic in some unusual way. It's, that's not a normal temptation. And so unless you've had some brush with the occult or the demonic in your life, I would lean towards that being psychological or the brain or maybe a phase and stress in your life going on right now, something like that. And I know that's so, a lot to say, right, Deb, but right, no, no, you did great. But let me just let me just be, for the rest of us listening to this because I think this is a very good um, question you're asking, Carl, and it could happen to to so many of us. Um, may I ask, are you Catholic or do you are you Protestant or a non denominational Christian? May I ask? <clears throat> not Catholic, and it's not really so much a violent in the sense of physical violence, but just a very um, strong kind of like inclination toward vice. Mm -hmm. that well, just seems to come out of nowhere, nowhere. like not right right well, well let it's me like you're just going along and all of a sudden mm -hmm. right. bam you get this really you know maybe thought from the past or something that's right inappropriate. okay so let me let me just add a minute let me add to this a little bit because mm -hmm. we, we we deal with this a lot in in life coaching Okay, and so when you have something like you're going along with your day, Carl, and you're you're having a pretty good day, and all of a sudden some strange dark thought comes into your mind, um, you know, a couple things I, I want to share. That this is the reason why I I spend most of my life talking about the guardian angels. Remember that the your guardian angel is beside you to really help illuminate your mind and also to help strengthen your will. And so I would encourage you at, at the beginning of each day to to say the guardian angel prayer or to acknowledge that your guardian angel is beside you. Because when these things come at us from nowhere, um, I mean, Adam, would, wouldn't you agree that this could be um, a way that the demons are trying to get us off focus, you know, get us, you know, thinking about something that is that is not of God and, and really is not beneficial to us spiritually. And so it's important that we stay strong. That's why sacrifice you know, wearing a blessed um, crucifix, a St. Benedict medal, you know, carrying your rosary with you, a blessed rosary in your pocket, saying a, a, a few prayers when this when this happens, I think is very helpful to keep a person, um, you know, centered so they don't they don't go into this deep thought or dark thought a little too much. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, Carl, we hear it all the time in coaching. People will tell us that they're they're working at the church and they're having a beautiful day. And then all of a sudden this dark, you know, thought comes into their mind and it ruins the rest of their day. What do you say to that, Adam? Yeah, like I said, like, and, and I thought, Carl, you were it was more explicitly like violent thoughts. Um, if it's impulses to vice, I, I think that happens to a lot of people. You yes, know, a, I agree. A, a lot of us wrestle with that, especially if you're resisting sin and there's certain drives in yourself and there's a lot of signals from the world and society and the way things are presented um, that just agitate us and, and agitate us towards sin. And so, the mind is like that, you know, as you're restraining the mind from certain things in life that are bad and it's, it's good to avoid them. Well, you know, there's some bad inclinations in human nature. And so every now and then they're going to kind of pop through. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. so I wouldn't beat yourself up too much if it's once in a while. Right. And I would and what you do is you reset very quickly, Carl. I know when it happens to a lot of us, we we go into a, a very quick we take take a time out quick prayer. I mean, uh, for me, I'm always about divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. I reinforce myself with the truths of God and I move on with the day because the, the quicker you, you um, get past it and, and, and focus back on God, it, it, it's better for you. Right, Adam? Yeah. And you know, one tip, if it's, if it's related to lust uh, or sexual sin, you know, the, the tip always is to go to the Hail Mary and to bring, you know, Mary, who was a model of chastity and of course, a model of so many things. Um, but to go to the Hail Mary is, I think, really effective. You know, I agree. Because we all, we all deal with, with those type of thoughts, and yeah. I think Mary is a good place to go. Absolutely. Carl, does that help? I, like, I really like the idea of strengthening the will mm -hmm. because, I mean, yeah, you know, it's like as soon as that happens, 
to immediately, you know, go to the Hail Mary and recommit, you know, to mm-hmm. chastity, I think. Yeah, yeah because like and, strengthening the will seems like a really good mm-hmm. opportunity there. Yeah, and, and one final thing, Carl, the faster you nip it in the bud exactly. and switch your mind to saying a Hail Mary, the better off you're going to be. If you entertain like a lustful thought or memory comes into your mind and you entertain it and play with that thought for a little right. while, it's going to get stronger and stronger very quickly. If you nip it in the bud immediately, it's right. easier to squelch it and, you know, not let that dominate you. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Sacramentals help as well, um, Carl. So, we, you know what, you're asking a question that all of us, uh, we struggle with. I mean, it's 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 part of, of this uh, the human condition. And so I thank you for stepping up and, and asking it. And I, and I pray mm-hmm. that, that, that it, it has helped you today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Have a beautiful rest of your weekend. Um, see, this, this is why we do this show, because I think a lot of people don't have access to, you know, picking up the phone and talking to a priest or, or going to their parish, and we can, we can help in this area. This is why these kinds of shows are a great resource for our parishes, I believe. Um, so let's go to Dave from Atlanta, Georgia, listening on The Quest. Hi, Dave. Welcome to the program. Thank you. So uh, my son, when he was a toddler, just old enough to speak but not really forming full sentences he came out of his room one time saying he was playing with grandma and my mom had just visited and so i said yeah you were playing with grandma anyway i'll basically he was playing with my deceased my mother-in-law and i uh, he was first of all i'm just wondering and i can go into more detail if you want about how we have proof that he actually was playing with her but uh he, I had heard somebody say one time that she couldn't have been in heaven because if she was in heaven, there's no way she could make an earthly visit, and she couldn't have been in hell either. She had to have been in purgatory, uh, and I didn't know if that was true. And the other thing I wanted to find out is that he kept saying there was something wrong with her eyes, and the best we could figure out is that she had no eyes. Now, is there anything to that? Okay, Dave. Um yeah, so I'm concerned about the no eyes thing because when something is a trick of the enemy, um, there's always something deformed or missing. They're not able to produce a proper full human being in terms of, of the apparition or, or whatever it is. And it is very common that the eyes are either hidden, shadowed, or they turn away or cover them in some way because for whatever reason, the eyes are often the thing that is deformed. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd be a little concerned about that. Um, I know we, you know, we can't get into a lot of depth here, but right. you know, was but, there but, any? Wait, real quickly, real Go quickly, ahead. how old? How old was the child again? I'm gonna. He was just forming sentences, so I'm gonna say about two, two and a half. Okay. Okay. So mm-hmm. he was under the age of reason. Go ahead, Adam. Yeah. 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 I mean, were there any uh, problems in that house with other spiritual manifestations? No, not to my knowledge. And any trouble in the family background with spirits? Not to my knowledge. Hmm. Well, I can tell you this, Dave. Um, you know, visits they tend to only happen like that right at the moment of death. It seems that God, for whatever reasons seems to, to allow mm-hmm. yeah that that brief visit of comfort right as somebody's passing um but it would not be normal to visit and play and you especially don't want to have a dialogue with something so if she was in purgatory she would only appear to ask for prayer it wouldn't be playing with somebody or dialoguing it's only asking for prayer um if they're in heaven all bets are off right padre pio has appeared to many people uh, since he has died and gone oh, to heaven. Oh, absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, but the eyes thing, things, yeah. yeah, the eyes thing has me concerned because um, that's right. usually a tip that it's a trick. And here's what here's what I would, uh, we're going to, um, right, right after uh, your call, we're going to go ahead and hit the last break. Um, I know a lot of people are texting in saying, are you going to do more breaks? Just one more, guys. So hang on, everybody call in. But let me just share this real quickly. 
so the the child having this encounter did did it bring the child peace and and did it end there or did the rest of the family try to pursue more communication with the mother-in-law that's that's a, always a question you want to ask of what the results of this right adam when there's an encounter mm -hmm. it it so, so many of these encounters are one and done it's over god has a reason um you know to, to send comfort to send a message through the angels but then it's over it's not this so was sure. there any type of pursuit of trying to communicate with the mother-in-law after after the, the the boy received this um this uh, this um you know encounter no no we we didn't pursue it at all but it did happen i believe on a, a few occasions it wasn't just a one-time deal it and it wasn't like he was calling her back he didn't need comfort because he had never met her. She passed away before he was ever born. So, mm. hmm. well, he might. Does he have a really healthy sense of imagination? Yeah, but there were things he said. This couldn't have been his imagination because he was saying things that there's no way he could have known. Mm -hmm. that, Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only the, the thing that I would say, Adam, tell me if you agree with this, is just always make sure you point it to what God um, commands us to understand about life and about death and about eternity. So what he what he instructs us, and, and if it goes outside of that range and something that is you're trying, you know, there's there's some kind of, you know, trying to figure out if, if there's a message or if there's a, a hidden clue to this. I think that could, that could potentially be dangerous. We, we stick with what God has told us to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, you know, we live our life here. Those that have died, um, they either go to um, heaven or purgatory or unfortunately hell. And then if they're in purgatory, we pray for them. If they're in heaven, they can intercede for us. And, and we, we ask we ask um, for for God in that in that vein, but uh, we don't go past that. Correct, Adam? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, it's an interesting thing. I will tell you, though, kids do. They're more receptive to the spiritual world because they're so innocent and they're and they're so open to that so it doesn't surprise me that maybe something of you know god comforting you know him or or a young child that doesn't surprise me but then going past that could be the the problem okay that is a a, a fascinating story and uh, i think that we we covered uh, the answers to that and when we come back you'll hear the music we do hear the music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the music. <laughs> right on cue. Mm -hmm. And Adam, when we come back, we have uh, full phone lines here on yep. the Spirit World for this November Open Forum. Thanks to everybody who's calling in and waiting. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. And actually, um, we just got a, a line freed there at 877-757-9424. Please call in if you have a question or comment. You can always email us, tsw at grnonline.com. Like us on Facebook. Join the family there at the Spirit World world podcast and we'll be right back it's common for atheists who object to belief in god because it can't be proven false by empirical observation but this objection fails because the principle it assumes called the verification principle is self-refuting it states a belief is true or false if and only if it can be verified or falsified by sense experience. Like the statement, it's snowing outside, which can prove true or false by looking out the window. But this principle is problematic because the principle itself can't be proven true or false by sense experience. Where in the universe is the truth value of this belief to be found? Can we see it under a microscope? The absurdity of these questions reveal that the principle itself cannot be proven true or false by sense experience, and thus is self-refuting. For this reason, the objection fails. I'm Carlo Broussard with the ready reason for Catholic Answers, Catholic.com. Are you facing a crisis in life? Are you feeling stuck and unable to see your way out of your current situation? You just might need a fresh perspective and we are here to assist. That's what life coaching is all about, sticking to a plan and creating new habits for a better life all with God at the center. Look into a completely free consultation today at StandTallToday.com. We have a team of life coaches ready to help you get excited about life again at StandTallToday.com. The 
Spirit World continues with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. If you have a question for the show, call 877-757-9424 or email tsw at grnonline.com. Okay, we'll get back to the phones in just a moment. Um, and yes, there's no more breaks. You don't have to worry, you guys. We're going to go the lightning round and get as many calls and questions and comments in as possible. But Adam, just to, just to follow up on Dave's call from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, listening on the Quest, I just wanted to say um, also, Adam, and tell me if you agree with this. When, when we do, wh whether it's through a child or through somebody having a thought about a loved one in a dream, I'm, I'm a firm believer that when uh, that person comes to mind, for a child or for an adult in a dream or what, what, however the circumstances around it, that is, it is a perfect opportunity for us to pray for that soul who may be in purgatory or to have masses said for that soul. So I would just encourage that for that mother-in-law that, that, that masses are being said or prayers are being said because anytime, I, I've always felt this and even when, when I studied angels for so many years, whenever there's always a reason God does something, always. And, and so when that person comes to mind, there should be prayers said for that person. What do you say? Sure. And prayers are never wasted. So if she is in heaven, that's fine. Those prayers will be applied to, to other souls. God never wastes any, any charitable act, which prayer is a charitable act. It's a loving act for others. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right, right. And there's also a greater degree of glory, you know, so it's always applied to, to, to the souls. And remember the souls in purgatory, you know, they, they can, they can pray for us. They can't take, they can't, um, help themselves in that, in that regard. So it's important for us to remember the souls in purgatory, all, all souls forever. As long as we're breathing here on this earth, we need to be praying for the souls in purgatory. That's, that's my, my belief. And that's my devotion. I love it. Um, okay. So Dave, thank you again. That was a great call. Let's go to Sharon from Colorado on the EWTN app. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for waiting Hi. and welcome. Yes. Thank you. Go right ahead. Um, hi, my question is uh, concerning my mom. When she was about three years old, she was in a crib in uh, her parents' room, and my grandpa tells us that she crawled out of the crib and went and got his pants and then brought them over to him and said, you have to go. And she just kept reiterating that, and then she just went and crawled back into her crib. Um, then also he tells us, tells us of a time when she was normally a very docile child, but she threw a fit and hung on to him and would not allow him to go to work. And that day he, he was really troubled and he just called off. And that day the person who took his position mm -hmm. at the factory um, had a very serious injury. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also tells us, uh, or my, they also tell us of my mom when she was pregnant uh, she had several miscarriages, and then she also had a stillborn. And when she was pregnant with the stillborn, she was awakened just out of the middle of the night with three knocks at the door. And I don't know where this folklore came from, but she was always told three knocks at the door meant death. And shortly after that, um, the baby was born, and he was stillborn. He was breached and had the cord wrapped around his neck. Now, my dad... My mom would hear things in the house. My dad would generally hear things outside, but he never heard those knocks. She was the only one who heard them. And then the final uh, story is that um, she and my grandparents were getting ready to go visit a sick uncle, and she was very, very close to this uncle. And um, in the middle of the night, she dreamt that he had passed away. He had come to her and said, you don't need to come. And so she got up the next morning and called my grandparents and said, have you heard anything about Uncle Sam? And then shortly after that, they got the news that he had passed in the early morning. So my question is this, and you may have just answered that on the, on the radio, but are these things of God or are they of, um, of demonic spirits? Okay. So that's a good question, Sharon. Um, so the simple way to, if, 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 if anybody yourself is having these type of experiences, a really good way to try to diagnose it is to very sincerely, and you have to mean it, ask Jesus to take it away if it's not from him, whatever the, the, what seems to be a gift that's going on. 
sincere, mm-hmm. sincerely ask him to take it away if it's not coming from God. Because it can be very tricky to figure out for sure, because sometimes there's an attachment to the family line that was established in a previous generation, and there's a spirit that's kind of trying to ingratiate itself. You know, it's a bad spirit, but it's trying to play nice for a while to get somebody to start relying on it and appreciating, you know, the information it's feeding them, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So we do have to be really careful when, when these strange things start happening. They can be from God. They can be spiritual gifts. And we don't always know why God provides certain information to to people or gives certain Mm -hmm. gifts. It does happen, though. Um, A few things to look for is the fruits of it. If it's Mm -hmm. always something negative or destructive, if it's only about death and destruction and negativity, it's it's probably not of God. Um, Things of God, you know, if they're negative, they're often warnings as opposed to just saying bad things are going to happen. You know, it Mm -hmm. would be like the warning, don't go to work today. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, and then look at the fruit in the person's life. Right. You know, and if the, if they're avoiding mm-hmm. church or if they're participating mm-hmm. in the sacraments. Well, let me jump in real quickly. The little mm-hmm. the little girl that um, you know, uh, went and warned her. I guess it was her father. Um, or was is this a Catholic family or can you give me the background, spiritual background? Okay. Real yes, quick? yes. My family, yes, they they okay. were Catholic. Um, okay. And the, here's the deal. Um, my mother's now passed for several years. She died at the age of 44 from ovarian cancer. Oh, and, um, but she, she was married outside of the church. Um, her, my dad was a devout Baptist from the South mm-hmm. and their marriage was, it was difficult to say the least because of that. But she did not, she was not going to Mass, and I always sensed just this unbelievable sadness in her every Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, but anyway, she, um, so she was not partaking of the Eucharist at that time and not attending Mass. Um, but she was a very, very wonderful woman who helped people, and I realized that that's not everything. I know she longed for it. Right before my mother passed, about about a year before she passed, my dad became Catholic, and they had their marriage blessed in the church. Mm. Um, now, that being said, when all those other things happened, she was not right. Okay, attending mass. Okay, and okay, so that's there's what... really no way for me to ask her, you know, right. to ask about those things. Um, but and sure. so I just wanted some sure. Some so in- a couple couple things i want to just leave you with this couple things and adam jump in if if if, if i'm not stating it correctly um so a couple things when the child again going back to the guardian angels the angels are there as messengers okay so the angels if if god in, if god wills it and god wants it those angels will deliver those messages now will they come through a child if if everybody else is is closed off or has severed their relationships with God or or something of that nature or diminished their relationship based on where they're at in sin, then yes, they're going to come through. They can come through the most innocent uh, person. And so having a child um, deliver a, a a message that the angels gave to them, I think is it's I've heard that many many times. So that that could, that um, possibly is correct on that area that the angel wanted a message sent uh, to to the the man not to go to work that day or whatever. Okay. Um, that's one, that's one thing. The second thing is, is, um, your mom, even though, even though everything kind of got fixed at the end, towards the end of, of her life with the church, please have masses said for her. Um, if you can get Gregorian masses, 30 days of masses for her, have masses said for her. See, I don't believe there's any accident why people are bringing up uh, conversations and situations that have happened with people that they love. There's no accident with God. So I would, I would definitely encourage you to have masses said for, for her. What do you say, Adam? Yeah, yeah. Again, prayer's never wasted, and, and it may benefit her in terms of, um, you know, even improving um, the amount of God that she's experiencing in heaven, the amount that she's understanding, the kind of, you know, if there's progress within heaven, because we can never know God fully, there was always more to know. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but but again, I, I would be at peace with this. It, it doesn't sound negative to me. Right. Um, and, and sometimes there's gifts that are there, and, and it could be that those gifts were there partly to call her 
-hmm. into a full relationship exactly. with God through the church. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to let you go with that because we're trying to do this lightning round and get as many calls in as possible. So thank you so much for calling. Keep keep in touch with us on the Spirit World at um, at fa on Facebook at the Spirit World Podcast. Catherine is up next from Texas on Guadalupe Radio Network. Catherine, give give us the name of your town. Uh, Louisville, Texas. Louisville, Texas. Okay, Catherine, take it away. Yep. Go right ahead. And Catherine, if you have your radio on in the background, turn it down really quickly. Otherwise, you're going to hear us. Okay. You're going to hear us two times, and that's it's going to be hard to focus. So, Catherine, okay. welcome to the Spirit World. Hello. How are you today? We're doing well. Thank you so much. Go right ahead. Wonderful. All right. I have. Um, what, I'm curious. If you suspect somebody may have been dabbling in evil things, and I don't know if they have not possession, but low-level activity, I don't know. Like, how would you find that out? And then what could you do? And maybe more importantly, what should you not do? Right. Well, I mean, remember, people have free will, and we, we can't necessarily find out for sure and investigate somebody's life and, and find out what they've been doing. Um, now, you can always pray for a person. So if there's been some clue that they're doing something that's, you know, spiritually harmful to themselves or maybe even to other people, always pray for them. Always forgive them if you feel, you know, that they, they have malice or they have, have had malice towards you. Forgive them, pray for them. The things that you shouldn't do is accept gifts and bring them into your home or accept food or drink and then consume it. Um, just on this, if the chance that they are involved in black magic, that's, those are ways to um, essentially connect spirits with people and, and bring about harm if somebody had malice and was messing with black magic. But there's no simple way to know unless you just ask them uh, and they tell you the truth. That's the only way to know for sure. And the things to do, okay. pray, forgive, and um, don't take gifts. Okay. All right. And then... Um, okay. May I ask a follow up on yeah, that? Sure, um, go right ahead. Like, did, um, can you give them a blessing, or can you bless their house, or does that potentially make it worse? Or like, well, how does I, that work? Again, their free will is is central. So, their house they have authority over. You don't have authority to go in and make spiritual choices for them. Just like imagine if somebody was practicing another religion and and they met you and they were standing in your front yard doing a ritual from their religion over your house, you would be offended by that mm -hmm. and say, this is my house, what are you doing? So okay. again, we can pray for them and pray that God yeah. bless their house and, and mm -hmm. bring grace into their life, but we can't go and mm -hmm. assert our will and, and say, I'm gonna bless your house whether you like it or not. But you could ask them if they're open to sacramentals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Adam. Yeah, yeah, you could ask them if you, if the timing's right and you have a good, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up, maybe you have an encounter, mm -hmm. you know, you might meet them and you can you can offer, you know, have that be in a conversation to get them open to mm -hmm. to the blessings of of sacramentals. All right. So it's almost almost like they're giving you permission ish. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. That's, that's very helpful. Thank, thank you, you so much, and God bless you. Have a have, have a, a beautiful. Day. Thank you. Have a beautiful weekend. Okay, I'm going to squeeze this in because I felt I feel so bad. Scott from Rochester, New York, called in, and Scott has a quick question. I am blind, and mass documents are in Braille from the um, Xavier Society for the Blind. Does it need to be blessed before um, he uses it? No, just like the missile doesn't need to be blessed before you use it right. to follow the readings in mass. Right. Okay. So I hope that helps, Scott. I wanted to squeeze that in, and I hope that um, um, works for you. Also, Don from Facebook has a great question about Padre Pio and the gift of bilocation. We're gonna. Um, I'll, I'll make sure we cover that next week because that that's we're gonna have to. We're gonna need some time to really um, go over that. So after Catherine, let's go to Diane from Buffalo, New York, on the Station of the Cross. Hi, Diane. Yes. Hi. How are you? We're doing well. Go right ahead. Uh, okay. Um. I am um, at the church. They had a, um, a, a life in the spirit series, and mm -hmm. like for six weeks. And um, one of the weeks was b baptism in the spirit. And they did say that we might get some of the spiritual gifts. Um, I, this is actually my second time I've done this, and I didn't get spiritual gifts the first time. But a, a couple of things. The, the one I want to get in quickly is um, 
I had something happen about a week ago. Um, maybe the, the gift of discernment of spirit or spiritual discernment. I think that's what it is. Anyway, um, it wasn't a good. I had a conversation with a family member, and it was it was an awful conversation. Um, and I, I kept wondering, wow, she she kept twisting things, and and she it's like she didn't know me, and I mean I, I don't know. It was it was it was bad. So I started thinking about it after I got off the phone. I just, I, I don't know if I was picturing. I won't remember this exactly, but I would. I guess I was picturing her, and I I felt or saw. Um, couldn't have been with my eyes, but maybe spiritually, um, like a, like energy in front of her. Um, I don't even know. I, you know, I'm not remembering if it's real well, but it it, it felt evil. It, it it was just um, it just felt evil, and I thought, wow, I don't know what's going on. But I have wondered about um, the demonic. Um, with you know, sometimes they're around addictions, and and there's a couple there that. Um, so I don't know if it was that, but. Anyway, so I, I thought, well, I'm going to go online because I, it just seemed like there must be a better way of describing what I what I was seeing or sensing. Um, and I came to the word repulsive, and that was it. That it, it was more. It was evil is one word, but repulsive. It was repulsive. It was like I, it was like the worst thing I could see or feel or whatever I was, you know. And I, so I wondered if that was this spiritual discernment, if that was the, um, or maybe it was something else. I don't know. Okay. So, Diane, um, it's impossible to know for sure whether that was spiritual discernment or your mind, your psychology, and your mind, you know, um, having common sense on your things. common mm -hmm. sense, your mm -hmm. gut instinct mm -hmm. um, kind of expressing itself in your imagination. Um, so, you know, if it was discernment, discernment, and, you know, help me on this, Deb, my, mm -hmm. my take on discernment is it serves one of two purposes. One, first and foremost, is a call to prayer and ministry for a person. Right. So if discernment indicates a person that has a particular struggle in their life, including evil might be in their life, that's the response is to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And number two would be a heads up or a warning. If somebody represents a spiritual danger to somebody, God may give them a heads up of be careful here. Yeah, to that's, stay away from it. Yes. Yeah, that's been mm -hmm. my experience. But Me too. E mm -hmm. even in the case of be careful here, you still pray for the person, but um, sometimes it's a heads up from God. Right, right. I'm not I'm not quite sure what, what you want to uh, maybe have us respond to. The one thing that I, I would say when, because I do a, a I'm, we, we both do, Adam and I have been, we work with people, you know, for many, many years on, you know, their, their um, discernment and a bit of spiritual direction, also life coaching. And, um, and it's very, it's very interesting how we sometimes want to, um, make it more complicated than it really is. If somebody is having difficulties in their life and they're making choices that are not going to keep them on the path heading towards God, I mean, clearly our role is to, is to encourage them to, to come back to um, a, a right frame of mind and an, an alignment with God's will, and also to deeply pray for them and fast for them. Because yeah. they need to, they need to come back, yeah. So sometimes I think, you know, it's it's interesting. We work with a lot of people, and you can really get into the details of things. And sometimes those details they're not necessary because it really is it really is important to just to um, deeply be committed to that soul getting to heaven, just like the angels are committed to us getting to heaven, just like the saints in heaven are committed to us getting to heaven. And we can do that through prayer and fasting. What do you say, Adam? Yeah, I think you're right on target, Deb. I do. I did do the prayer and fasting, and I, I, I unintentionally I fasted a couple of days, and it's like, well, oh, I might as well do the prayer now. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, I'm hoping that helps. But I guess part of it, well, I'm, I part of it, I was trying to figure out if that was the discernment of spirit, you know, because the spiritual gifts, I know there's about six or seven of them there or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't know if that was, or I was just trying to well, identify what it was. Yeah, so, so Diane, you know, if it is, if it's a gift of the spirit that you received, be patient. Wait on God's timing. It'll happen again. And then look for the fruits of it. If it's a gift from God, there's going to be good fruits from it. If there's no fruit either way, it's probably psychology. And if there's bad fruit, it's from the enemy. So be patient, give it time, and then go back to your priest or your spiritual director after a few more of these experiences and say, can we process this together? Right, right. 
Okay, that'll do it for this uh, edition of the November uh, November Open Forum. Um, so Joanne and the others, uh, we're going to ask Libby and Carol, our call screeners, to pick up the line and get your comments. We can put them into the mailbag edition, or you can always call back for the December Open Forum. But that'll do it for the for this particular episode. Adam, thank you so very very much. Um, I thought this was fabulous. We are still retrieving some of the comments coming in on social media. We'll wave to you again, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Libby, Carol, Tim. You guys did a great job. Thank you, EWTN, for carrying the program. Okay, for Adam Bly, I'm Debbie Giorgiani. Until next Saturday, have a beautiful and blessed week. We'll see you real soon.